Hello, this is Lori from the Bees Knees Pottery, and I thought we'd do a real quick video today on how to make this beautiful sunflower plate for a nice Mother's Day gift. A lot of simple, easy brush strokes, and we have several pieces that you can do it on. We have this plate. We also have um, another gorgeous plate that has a sunflower off to the side. We have a small sunflower plate. We have a sunflower mug. We have a sunflower bowl that looks real great with the plate. You can do a, a small chip and dip setup. And we have a sunflower box. That's pretty handy for a few little trinkets. Today I'm going to do the small plate and we're going to start with a base coat. The base coat is going to be very light. It's gonna seal the bottom of your plate. We're gonna use the biggest brush in our kit. We're gonna start with the big paint that comes in your kit and we're just going to paint the whole plate. We're going to do two coats of this. It will be all over the whole plate, even in the center. See, I'm going right in the center. Doesn't matter how your brush strokes go on this part. Being generous again, you know, we like to be generous with our glazes. There should be sliding right on, just gliding on with no um, friction. And you wanna get the edge of your plate. Make sure you get it nice and sealed. Once they're sealed, they can go in the dishwasher. So that's always nice for cleanup when you're done. And we are doing the back also. See how quickly it's turned chalky? That is dry on that side. So we're all set. Gonna do the back real quick. And then we're gonna flip it over and do the front one more time. When my paint is generous on my brush, you can see how fast it glides on. But you can also see how fast this is drying with the first coat. And it depends on your atmosphere in your home, how quickly it will dry. Again, we're putting the paint all over. I don't want, I don't want big globs, but I do want it to be um, generous and just keep going all the way around. I'm just going to go around and smooth it all out. Make sure I have it nice and covered. I'm swirling my brush around to get those little um, areas that are rough in there to make sure the paint goes in there. And then I'm going to hit my edge one more time. And um, a lot of people will ask, you know, should I start with the front or should I start with the back? And it really is personal preference, but you know some people will say you start with the back so it's nice and dry, but you can see how fast this paint is drying, so it doesn't really matter. The front is dry, so my hand is right on the front, and it doesn't matter. It's dry, so it dries fast. It's nice and dry in the studio today, so everything's cooperating with us. Flip it over, and everything you see here is included in your kit for this project. So you come with the brushes, and you have your um, paints, you have your piece. This kit will come with at least two brushes. We're gonna use this um, wide brush, and then for this next part, we're gonna use um, this green brush, that it's a round brush. You can also use this one, that doesn't really matter. I really like um, 
the round brush for this next part. I am cleaning my brush, drying it. Paper towel and the bowl will come with your kit also. We're gonna start with these two colors. It's um, a yellow and then a little bit darker gold color. Um, I believe it's uh, dandelion and tiger tail that will be in your kit. And the technique I wanna teach you today is double loading your brush. So taking our brush, putting one side, you can see I just have one side, one side's empty, and then the other side in the paint. So I have two different colors on my brush. And what I'm gonna do is lay my brush on here so that both colors come out. Now remember I have the light yellow down already, and I'm going to take my brush and just pull it. I can be kind of sloppy with this because um, I have the yellow underneath already. So I'm just going to pull these colors, loading my brush on the same side, light on the light side, dark on the dark side. And I'm just going around first by doing the whole area. I'm not really worrying about where I'm putting the paint. I am going into the center. See how it's in the center there? It's okay. We're gonna go over that area with darker colors and dark colors will um, cover up those light colors. So again, it doesn't matter if I leave some showing. If I come over here and leave that area showing, it doesn't matter because we already did the work and put that light color down there. So we can just kind of put the colors on all the way around. Not worrying too much. Only thing I'm worrying about is putting dark on the dark side of my brush and light on the light side. And dark. I don't know if you can see that. You can see how the light and the dark are making their way around the plate. I'm leaving some places open because it doesn't matter because there's paint there already. No worries. It's the way we like it. All right, now I'm going to go around again and in some of these areas, can you see there are other leaves and I'm just gonna make sure the leaves that are over have brush shrug strokes that are over. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what color, I just wanna make sure my brush strokes are going in the right direction on those little leaves, those little petals. just to make sure it makes some sense. So there are a small petal there, there, there. Just making sure my brush strokes are all kind of going in the right direction. Now, let's say that I want light, more light there. I just go through and put some more light where I want it. But there you go. It's just all the colors automatically blended on the plate. I'm going to wash my brush off. And remembering light yellow is in the center, I'm going to start with brown and take my brush and I'm going to do just a, like a little stabbing motion on my plate. And I'm going to leave some areas open so that yellow will show through. I'm just pouncing on this area. like that and then I'm going to add a little black I just like the way if you can see I just like the way the black kind of um, heightens that area and that texture so I'm going to take a little bit of black I'm going to offload offload is when you take some in uh, your brush and put it on the paper and take some off so you don't have too much and then I'm just going to add that in the center see how I'm letting the other colors show through not covering it all up, just pouncing. Just as simple as that. There you go. I have my um, flower completed. Let's make sure I get it all the way around the outside of the circle. Wash my brush off. And now for the fun part. Didn't that go fast? Yeah. Now we have this fun little idea where you can actually maybe put some little bugs on your plate. And um, you just take a finger, put it in the... Um, paint and then touch it on your 
plate and you're going to have a little bug and um it's a little difficult to do when you have long nails but it's also a little difficult to get a small enough brush for this so we put a toothpick in your kit and um, the toothpick can make little dots and i'm just going to make a little ladybug just little dots just like that it's going to make a cute little ladybug maybe put a little dark end here to make sure he's got a little head and then i'm going to take a little bit of my white and put a couple little eyes. Now white is gonna show up on black, isn't that crazy? You know, we talk about light and dark colors all the time, but white is a color that has a lot of concentration in it and it's gonna show up on anything. I got a little paint here from my fingernail, so look how I can just scrape it right off. Isn't that great? So you make a little mistake, it's okay, just scrape it off. I'm just scraping that red off, I'm leaving the other color underneath. If you're not sure, just take your brush and smooth it out a little bit there. It's going to blend it up and um, then we like bees so you can take this color here and just go ahead and maybe where the area is a little darker put a little dot for a bee and then again take your black and just put little lines in there so that you can see your bee and then maybe put a couple dots for his eyes and then I like to put a little stinger on them because that'll show up too. Put a little stinger there. And then we're going to do some wings. And for the wings, I'm going to use white. And I'm going to use the end of my brush, bam, just a little bit, and put a wing here on either side. And the polka dots are going to show up too. Just going to put a couple little dots and then maybe some little... Uh, no, I guess not. I was going to put some antlers, but it'll look a little funny with his with his eyes. So we're just going to leave it like that. There's our bee and there's our ladybug. Um, you can do a sideways bee. Just put one eye and one set of wings and he's flying sideways. Um, also, on the back, fun thing to do. Um, go ahead and maybe write something on the back of your plate. Um, on this one, we put Happy Mother's Day 2020 and then social distancing together. So it's a little memory of this Mother's Day that we had to um, be apart from other people, but we got to um, spend some time with your mom and, um, or maybe you're gonna send this to her. Whatever note you wanna put on the back, it's always fun and a great memory. I hope this helped um, for some fun ideas and easy techniques to make you look like a pro. Thank you, and you can find all this at thebeesneespottery.com, art kits to go. Thank you.